this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to animate this flying paper title animation. Hi guys, my name is Manuel. We'll quickly put together the page, then animate the rough movement and use a few standard effects to make the animation look good. Lots of reasons to stick around. So let's start with quickly creating the page. We create a new comp, name it paper, size 1500 by 1500 pixels. We add a background solid, name it paper as well. The color, like some kind of faded paper, sort of yellowish. Let's add the title somewhere in the center, using the title tool. I use Dean Condensed, which is available on Adobe Fonts. Let's duplicate the line, move it below. <laughs> Get the spelling right. Then let's add two black squares using the rectangle tool, symbolizing pictures. <laughs> Sorry, with no layer selected, of course, we don't want to create a mask. The first one above our title. Name it Pick. We simply duplicate it and move it below. Here, maybe. Then let's use the pen tool to add some black lines. With no layer selected, Next to the pics, like some written text. Stroke around 30 pixels. Let's position it and name it a line. Add some more. Let's adjust the path and add some more lines. And again, duplicate them and move them down. Maybe a big headline up on top. And some dashed lines in between, like separators. Less stroke width, and we add some dashes here in the stroke property. Duplicate it two times, position it. Finally, we add an adjustment layer. Option Command Y, name it Noise, and head over to the Effects and Presets window to add noise. Around 10% to give it a little bit of texture and we don't use color noise. Awesome, that's that. The animation basically consists of two scenes, the paper flying towards the camera and the paper in front of the camera, creating the illusion of a continuous movement. Let's start with the second scene. We create a new comp, name it title animation. 1920 by 1080 pixels, 96 frames long, and add the paper comp at 11 frames. Then we turn it into a 3D layer by activating this little cube. Scale it up to around 200% and rotate it slightly along the Y axis and along the Z axis. Let's scale it up some more and position it so that the text is still somewhat readable. <laughs> Maybe it's a little too big. Okay, looks good for me. We head over to the Effects and Presets window and add Wave Warp. Wave Type, Sign. Wave Height, 6. Wave Width, 600. Direction, 70 degrees maybe. Wave Speed, around 0,4. Anti-aliasing, High. That adds some slight movement to the page while it is in front of the camera. Then we add warp. Set the warp axis to vertical and bend to zero for now. Then we go to 26 frames, add a keyframe for bend and horizontal distortion and all the other properties. Next, we go to 11 frames and scale the paper down to around 120%. We change the orientation, turning it over to the side a little bit. Okay. And let's set the bend to around 40. Horizontal distortion to around 50 seems right. Then we move it down to the bottom right corner. From where it's blown to the screen. We open the graph editor, make sure snap is activated and edit speed graph is selected. We select position, move the right point down, push the handle to the left. 
Then we select scale, do the same. Same with orientation. We press U to see all keyframes and for pen, we move the right pointer. And horizontal distortion. Awesome. That's the paper flying in. Then we go to 56 frames, set keyframes again. And move the position slightly up and to the left. You might see the motion path looking all weird suddenly. After Effects adds some PC behavior to it. So we grab the Convert Vertex tool and click on the point to make it linear again. We select the position keyframes, open the graph editor again. On the left, there's this bump in the speed curve. That's the second keyframe in the timeline. To fix that, we move the lower point up to the top one. If they're at the same height, the fast movement at the beginning will smooth softly into the slow movement in front of the camera. Awesome. We head over to the Effects and Presets window. Let's close the Graph Editor first. And add CC Page Trim. Controls, bottom right corner. Let's zoom out a little. Fold Position, the bottom right corner. Fold Radius, around 175. Light Direction, around 75 degrees. We set keyframes for the fold position, fold radius, and the light direction. We press U until we see all the keyframes in the timeline. We go to 71 pixels, move the paper up, and out. Need to zoom out even more. Out, <laughs> out of the left corner of the screen. All right, out of the screen. And again, let's zoom back in here. We need to adjust the animation path by clicking on these points, <laughs> whichever one it is. Um, that seems right. All right. Let's rotate it some more. Zooming back out. <laughs> this is trial and error. There's no right or wrong rotation at this point. It should all come down to a smooth final animation. Okay. We set the bend to minus 16, horizontal distortion to 24. Okay, that looks right. And we move the fold position somewhere. Yeah, to the middle of the page, like maybe here. We need to set the back opacity to 100. And let's adjust the light direction. And let's move these two keyframes back to 71 frames. We open the graph editor again, move all the left points to the zero line and pull the handles to the right at the same time. So let's check it out. The paper is blown out of the screen. Awesome. Let's take care of the first scene now. We grab the paper solid from the solid folder and add it to the comp. End point at 11 frames. Then we add noise. And lazy as we are, we simply copy it from the paper comp and paste it to the solid. Then we scale it down. Let's actually turn it into a 3D layer first. Then scale it down to around 15% maybe. And let's rotate it. Turn it on its back. Okay, to the side. Seems good. Next, let's move it to the center of the right edge, from where the page flies in. We open the position property, and we need to add CC page turn, of course. Controls, top right corner, and we move the fold position to near the top right corner. We increase the fold radius to around, well, 190. Set the back opacity to 100, and adjust the light direction. Then we add warp again. <laughs> Where is it? Set warp axis to vertical again. Band is fine, I think. Horizontal distortion? I don't know. Four, maybe. Alright, let's move it out of the screen. 
and set keyframes for bend, horizontal distortion, the position, scale and orientation. And don't forget fold position, we don't need fold radius I think, light direction. And then we go to 10 frames. Scale it up to around 60% maybe. Then we move it down to the bottom right corner. Rotate it. Let's press U to see all our keyframes in the timeline. Then we bend it downwards. Maybe a tiny bit more. Move it up a little. And move the fold position down. Let's move it back into the screen a little more. Awesome. Important is the bending down here to support the upward movement coming next. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell to get notified when my next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video. Bye.